Hi hey guys, welcome back <clears throat> to the channel. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I've made a video, and I've decided to do um, a diorama with a universal carrier. And um, I had the Tamiya universal carrier model which comes with two sets of figures it says on the front that it's for the european campaign but um it also comes with some eighth army figures that uh from the western desert and i thought that i could use all the figures in one diorama um rather than just use the european figures which you can see i'd used before uh on a patrol and um, I thought if I did a Southeast Asia uh, Burma theatre, uh, it would allow me to use all the figures because they, they used a, a combination of uniforms in Burma, I think. Um, shorts because of the hot weather. Um, cloth hats, helmets. The Indian Army were there. The Nigerian Army were there. The Gurkhas were there. There was a real range of uniforms. So really, it's just to make the most of the um, the figures that come with the model. Um, the chindits, as you saw a few pictures there at the beginning, um, the chindits were like um, a deep penetration reconnaissance group uh, that, that functioned behind Japanese lines. Um, really, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a poison chalice to be. Uh, assigned to the missions that they got because they were hampered with disease, uh, they weren't well supplied, they weren't well led uh, in all cases, and um, they had a tough time fighting the Japanese, and obviously those that were captured uh, had a tough time as well. But um, they didn't have many vehicles. I've read that the Indian Army had Stuart tanks. It's the 77th Brigade, of the Indian Army, that was their official designation. And they did have um, Stuart tanks, but uh, when it came to fighting behind the lines in the jungle, um, I'm sure they, they didn't use them. <clears throat> they were in the battles, the main battles. So this is a bit of a mismatch, mismatch this, um, this diorama is gonna be. Um, but basically it's, it's a patrol, a 10 man patrol of the Indian Army, perhaps behind enemy lines, with a universal carrier, covered in mud. So that's going to be a two-parter, guys, and this um, first video is just showing you Tamiya's universal carrier, and then I'll hopefully combine the different elements that I've got to make an interesting diorama out of it. So, like I said, I've made one of these before. It just fits together like old Tamiya kits really easily um yeah it's a lovely kit the universal carrier was was just ubiquitous in the second world war used by lots of different um armies and after the war as well so there, if you type in universal carrier indian army there is several pictures uh, that you can see from the 40s and 50s and um yeah, I've just done it straight out of the box, really. I've not added any storage or any um, exciting laser etch or anything like that to it. So, um, yeah, I've included more of the build than I usually do, but the, the paint job is really a quick one. It's just green all over, and um, but I plan to cover it in mud because the guys... The vehicles, the, the, the pack horses, the men, um, they had to contend with monsoon rains and deep mud, and it was tough going. Um, so it's kind of homage to uh, to the troops that fought in Burma. My great uncle was killed in Burma. Um, and I'd have loved to have included a little video because it, the Manchester University owned a video that he was in. Um, in the... In the Second World War, because the men were so removed from Britain and because the communication lines were so stretched, the army sent out film crews 
to make videos with all the soldiers and they showed them in cinemas in Manchester and um, you can see them on the website and I, I will put, I'll put the link to the website underneath and uh, Sergeant Jack Trainer is my great uncle he's one of the first guys that, that comes up and uh, gives a message to his uh, to his sister who was my grandma um, so yeah he was, he was with the Lancashire Fusiliers Lancashire Fusiliers in 44 and 45 were posted to, to Burma uh, second battalion I think it was might have been first battalion and um, they fought in these um, these thrown together uh, columns of Gurkhas Nigerian troops um, I think Anzac troops um, and some English troops and uh, yeah they had, a, they had tough going through the jungle so um, let me know what you think guys and uh, like I say the diorama will be part two that I'll, that I'll post in a, in a week or so but um, yeah for the for you, people in the UK I think the uh, universal carrier is about £10 it's not an expensive one and you do get the um, six figures with it and I had uh, retained the three of the figures from the previous um, the previous one that I'd done so
I'm painting the, the men bit by bit as I need to leave the model uh, alone, you know, as the glue dries and whatnot. So I'm going back to the figures. And um, whenever you see colorized pictures of the chindits, uh, they're always wearing dark green. I think that's an effect of the sweat on the uniform. Um, in real life, I think it was the same khaki that uh, all other British soldiers wore in the Second World War. So I'm going to paint them in that kind of uh, middle brown khaki colour. Um, and uh, just do the webbing and the packs um, and stuff like that in, in a kind of uh, US kind of olive, um, olive green colour. But the actual universal carrier itself is just in the, the usual olive green of uh, British vehicles. You do get allied stars with it, um, but the Indian Army <clears throat> versions in the Far East didn't use allied stars as far as I know. Well, the pictures online certainly don't show that, so uh, I've left that off and just done British markings. Uh, you do get plenty of decals, actually, for this, for this model. Several different um, regimental emblems um, obviously just one of the bridging classification because it's five ton it's a five ton vehicle you get um, divisional badges from a number of divisions and then the arm of service um, insignia for the front uh, fender and the back fender um, and then registration plates or military um, war department numbers so um, you can you can create a number of different universal carriers with this kit uh, it's quite versatile but one thing to note is the um, the front plate of armor um, that they sit behind it makes it um, once it's in place, you can't add a figure. So you have to add the figure before the model's finished. That's definitely worth worth bearing in mind because um, you could find yourself trying to rip it apart again in the future. But the, the armoured plate that you see near my glue uh, on my board there is um, the last thing to go on. And... Um, you can have uh, a seated driver from from the 8th Army Western Desert, or you can have um, a driver with a beret from the European campaign who is slouching over the, the front armour. So I'm going to use both, one in the passenger seat. So, uh, yeah, just be aware, guys, you've got to put the figures in before you... Um, before you complete the model.
I don't know why this this one turned out so long, guys. It's only a small, quick model to make, but I seem to have ended up with hours of hours of footage. Um, <clears throat> you might think I'm painting it quite roughly, but I'm only painting the interior just because, along with the figures, uh, you need to pre-paint the interior before you put the actual um, front armor on, because otherwise you're gonna struggle to get into the the spaces. Um, I've used all four seats in this carrier uh, in the end for figures, so um, not a lot will be visible of the seats. Hence why I'm just slapping the paint on, because um, it'll be mostly hidden by the figures. And uh, I think, you know, I've come to terms with the fact that, you know, you could do more professional uh, effects with an airbrush. I'm spending all the money on the different, um, all the different tools and the different, the, you know, effects, different kinds of paints. Um, <clears throat> I have conceded and invested in a, um, a rattle can of, of primer, decent primer. So this is the last model I'll do without, without spray priming it. Um, and hopefully that'll have a, a smarter effect in the finished model. So I'm going to try that on my next one, which is the M36 uh, American Tank Destroyer from the Second World War. That's my next model. But, um, yeah, I'm also slapping the paint on when it comes to the outside because um, the plan is to get to get to muddy it up to make it really filthy um, in the finished diorama. So... Yeah, it's, it's very much about the finished effects, the end effect with this one. Um, I've shown you there how uh, you, you have access to the seats and you can paint them and stuff whilst the, the front armour shield's off. Um, <clears throat> I enjoyed doing this smaller model and I think I might do a, like a Willys Jeep as well, something like that in the future. Um after my M36 B1 tank destroyer, I've got a Challenger 2, um, and then I've got uh, a First World War Mark IV tank, and a First World War Whippet light tank. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing trench dioramas again for those. Uh, but then after that, I might invest in some, uh, in a Willys Jeep. I remember doing that when I was younger and enjoying it. So you see the guy who's got the uh, who's from the European kit as well. He's leaning with his elbows on the on the front. So I'm going to try and use both of those, both different sets, and I've combined the uh, ammunition uh, and the uh, packs and the helmets to kind of mix up the characters, mix up the figures, um, and I've also got ICMs. Gurkha rifles, which is for uh, soldiers that also <clears throat> tie in with the Far East and Burma um, uniforms. So yeah, I think there's ten figures anyway. There's ten figures on the on on the board uh, when I've finished, hopefully. Um, and the captain of the Universal Carrier, I've gone back to my. Um, one of my previous builds um, to put to put him into another diorama. So they went. They first. Uh, <clears throat> they first sent an expeditionary force of the, of the uh, Chindits, into Burma in forty three, and I, I read online that three thousand men set out and eight hundred and eighteen, uh, didn't return. And of the ones that did return, six hundred were no longer fit for, uh, active duty, and that was the effect of dysentery and malaria and things like that that they encountered in the jungles um, 
than those troops, which were uh, Indian troops, Nigerian troops, and uh, Liverpoolian troops, uh, were dispersed. And in 1944, a new expeditionary force was put together with um, Lancashire Fusiliers, uh, a couple of other regiments, um, <clears throat> uh, Indian troops, Gurkhas, and uh, again Nigerian troops, who they thought would be more suited to the jungle fighting. Uh, and they were sent in again. And in total, I think they lost 1,396 uh, soldiers with 2,500 wounded. So there was not a, a easily won conflict. And um, it's certainly not uh, much spoken about in the UK. Um, not as much as, you know, D-Day and their missions in Europe. Um, but uh, that's also to do with the uh, scorched earth policy that the British the British military uh, brought in. The British military in 1940, well, the early 40s, uh, thought that the Japanese might come up through Burma and actually invade India. Um, so they stripped the land of food. Um, they took away a lot of resources, boats, transport, animals. Um, a whole sway of Bengal was, was like stripped um, so that when the Japanese came over the border, they wouldn't have any local resources to, to use. <clears throat> it's something, it's not very famous in, in the UK for sure, but uh, 3 million Indians died because their food and source of income was taken away uh, by the British government. So there's several reasons. I mean, the fact that they weren't defending Britain, but they were defending Britain's colonial interest. Um, but a long story short, the, the soldiers that fought in the Far East were not given the same status and fame as the soldiers who fought um, in the defence of Britain and in, in Europe against Hitler. I don't think there is a Chindit-related kit that I've seen. Um... Like I say, they didn't have many vehicles, so that just might be because there's no vehicles that were kind of um, appropriate for, for a Chindit diorama. But uh, I don't remember ever seeing um, a kit of figures. Uh, and it's a very particular, very specific uniform. Um, so I think it would, it would suit like a little four or five man uh, box set. Um, but then I suppose it'd be a difficult diorama because you'd have to recreate the Burmese jungle, which I've, I'm going to do to a certain degree, but I'm going to simplify it, obviously. Um, but yeah, the Indian army um, photo that I was working from, <clears throat> it had this brown um, camouflage strip uh, across the top of a... across the top of the universal carrier so i have mimicked that but it was quite scruffily done uh on the photograph so i think it was just uh, applied by the soldiers so these red and white flashes if you ever see them on tanks they're the royal armored corps um designation And you can also get white, red, white. Uh, you see them. You see them on Matilda tanks, and uh, tanks and armored cars in the Western Desert.
So you can see there that the, my figure that I warned would get <coughs> would not get uh, placed properly in the in the carrier unless you did it before the front shield. So he's there now, the driver. Um, it's quite a tight fit. The the steering wheel column has to go between his legs, and his hands have to fit the steering wheel. But it's really hard to work out the placement of it when you're building him as to where you can put his elbows and his hands. Um, so you have to kind of wait and see until when you get it in position. But uh, it worked out okay for me. The passenger seat, there's a bit more space. There's a Bren gun, but uh, I'll just be able to place the other three figures uh, in, in after the model's completely finished. So that's not too bad. The, these markings weren't used in the um, in the actual instructions. So <clears throat> for the Royal Armoured Corps, you've got a flash on either side towards the back and then one <clears throat> just below the Bren gun uh, on the front sloping armour. So you can see it's got the uh, our service badge, the colours behind the number uh, designate whether it's infantry, uh, armour, artillery and the number itself is the battalion number. And on the opposite side, on the opposite fender is divisional badge. This, the decals, whilst they are good, they didn't have anything for the Far East. They had uh, Western Desert markings <coughs> and um, markings for the European conflict. So it's not authentic, but when I make my models, I don't ever think that. Um, a museum's going to buy them off me and they need to be historically perfect, perf perfectly accurate. And then you, you'll notice that um, when you do the uh, War Department numbers, on, the, on most vehicles the first letter is T um, and that's, be, that's because it's tank and the type of vehicle uh, denotes what the first letter of the registration plate will be and um, even though the universal carrier is not a tank uh, the registrations available on the decal set uh, all began with T which I think is authentic and um, if it was Canadian Universal Carrier, then it would be CT. So I wonder if it was authentic, it might be IT for an Indian Army uh, vehicle. But it's like I say, I'm not, I'm not worried about stuff like that.
So now I'm going to the um, Vallejo uh, Dust and Mud Effects kit that I've used before, used a few times, but I really wanted to um, put a lot of it on, um, make a real um, filthy vehicle <clears throat> that I've been running down dirt roads through the, through the jungle uh, in this situation. And um, to also do a dried mud and a wet mud effect, try and get a two tone um, effect of it, but also obliterating the 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 decals are lovely, but they're very brightly coloured, and um, I think um, they stand out quite a lot from the from the dull green that I'd painted the vehicle. So I obliterated most of them with with the mud, and. Um, you know, it's a small vehicle as well, so all it takes would be a couple of muddy puddles and it'd be quite filthy. Um, I did film the paint in the, um, the figures, but uh, the footage, I couldn't really use it. As you can see, I get, get my big hands in the way all the time. And um, when I was painting the smaller figures, it was uh, I wasn't really uh, mindful of where the camera was. Obviously, the tracks, because of their continuous motion, um, are the least muddy of of everything on the vehicle. But then a lot of spray um, will be on the flat surfaces. And uh, it's the kind of vehicle that you have to scramble into and scramble out of. So even if uh, it hadn't gone through um, thick mud itself, uh, the guys running all over it would have uh, certainly made the upper surfaces dirty as well. Not a lot left to say, guys. Um, I enjoyed the build. Uh, like I say, I've got a diorama in mind. That's going to be part two. But it's going to be ten figures in a vehicle. Uh, so it should be good. And, um, you know, I enjoyed painting this one. But in hindsight, looking at it on the video footage, uh, it wasn't a great paint job. Uh, it wasn't a tidy paint job. And um, I think maybe uh, I knew all along that I was going to put lots of mud on. Um so the so the paint job wasn't really super important and uh, i was working from photographs i don't know whether you guys think that makes it easier or harder um it's, it's it's hard sometimes to 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 kind of work freehand looking at uh looking at a photograph which is blurry sometimes black and white um vehicles like this are always covered in storage and tarps and camouflage and netting so it is hard to work out the proper scheme obviously that's why they include the the instructions uh, it's much easier to work from them but i uh, just wanted to do something a bit different this time uh, thanks for watching guys if i don't put another video up um before christmas have a nice christmas oh you're all staying safe and and well and avoiding the latest version of uh, of COVID. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Supermodel Dave, the same as YouTube. And I've posted, I think, a few more pictures of it uh, to my Instagram as well. But then um, tune back in uh, in a week or so. I'll post the uh, the diorama, which is going to be a patrol in Burma. Uh, the ten figures and the Universal Carrier. Thanks for watching guys.